Hi, this is Amr Abdul Gawad, and we're going to discuss in this lecture nerve injuries around the elbow. So what are the objectives of this lecture? First, we'd like to explain the anatomy of nerves around the elbow, and then we'd like to describe the clinical presentation of nerve injuries around the elbow and how to differentiate one from the other. A good source that you can use is this book, Pediatric Orthopedic Handbook for Primary Care Physician, written by myself and Dr. Naga. Let's discuss briefly the anatomy of nerves around the elbow. There are three main nerves, ulnar nerve, median nerve, and radial nerve. This is a simple picture for the elbow. This is the humerus, this is the radius, and this is the ulna. This is the lateral side, the side away from the midline. This is the mid medial side, the side which is close to the midline. The ulnar nerves at the level of the elbow runs posterior. The other two nerves runs anterior, which is the median nerve and radial nerve. Both of them runs anterior. If you see the radial nerve is on the lateral aspect, the ulnar nerve is on the medial aspect, and the median nerve is in the midline. Again, the ulnar nerve is posterior. That's why uh, if you put your uh, hand on the posterior medial side of the elbow and draw, you will feel the ulnar nerve, and sometimes this nerve can give you a shock if you uh, hit it uh, on that side. Radial nerve at the level of the elbow will give a, a, a branch of the nerve, which is the posterior interosseous nerve, and the median nerve will give the branch, which is the anterior interosseous nerve. So we have three main nerves, ulnar nerve, radial nerve, and median nerve. The ulnar nerve is posterior, radial and medial nerve are anterior. Radial nerve is lateral, ulnar nerve is medial, median nerve is in the middle. Radial nerve gives rise to a uh, posterior interosseous nerve, median nerve gives rise to the anterior interosseous nerve. So what are the causes of nerve injury around the elbow? First, there are fractures and dislocations. Sometimes fractures and dislocations will cause nerve injury, like humerus fracture that can sometimes cause radial nerve palsy. Supracondylar fracture of the humerus, this can cause injury to the anterior interosseous nerve, the branch of the median nerve, ulnar nerve, or the radial nerve. Elbow dislocations are also sometimes associated with ulnar nerve palsy. If there is open laceration or gunshot wounds, this also can cause nerve injuries. Post-operative, so after any surgeries around the elbow for internal fixation or osteotomy, patients can develop nerve injuries. And there are some medical conditions that present with nerve injuries like lip toxicity and charcot marie tooth. So let's start with the radial nerve palsy. So radial nerve palsy has motor and sensory manifestation. It's mainly motor nerve, so you will have wrist drop. That means that the patient will not be able to extend his wrist. Uh, this is a picture for a 14-year-old boy who had a traction injury of his radial nerve. This resulted in radial nerve palsy. And you can see here he has wrist drop. That means his, he cannot pull his wrist up. So his wrist is down. We call that wrist drop. And he also has finger drop, which means that he cannot extend the fingers at the level of the metacarbopharyngeal uh, joint. So if you see the fingers are down, he cannot pull these fingers up at the level of this joint. Uh, I want you to remember something that uh, the radial nerve will give on later uh, the posterior interosseous as we're going to see. So the posterior interosseous has only the finger drop because the branches which extend the wrist, uh, one of them come before the radial nerve give the posterior interosseous. So radial nerve will show as wrist drop and finger drop. When we're going to discuss the posterior interosseous later on, it will be only finger drop. Regarding the sensory manifestation, it's only a, a small area of sensory loss at the base of the thumb. So let's discuss now the posterior interosseous nerve. As we said, posterior interosseous nerve is a branch of the radial nerve. That's why the manifestation of posterior interosseous nerve uh, are a part of the general conditions of the radial nerve. You will find the patient has finger drops, so a finger drop, so he won't be able to extend the fingers at the level of the metacarbopharyngeal joint, as we saw in the previous picture. And also, he will not be able to extend the distal phalanx of the thumb, as we're going to see in the video in the next slide. Uh, remember, posterior interosseous nerve is a motor nerve. There is no sensory deficit. So radial nerve will give you wrist drop and finger drop. Posterior interosseous nerve is part of the radial nerve. It will give you only finger drop. So one of the easiest way to assess uh, the posterior interosseous is to ask the patient to uh, extend his thumb at the uh, interphalangeal joint. So if you can see this video. Give me thumb up. I'm asking here. As much the as patient you can, to, up. to extend the IP of the thumb. Let's see that again. I'm asking you to, to extend the IP of the thumb, and if you see as it's not moving. Up. Up. Let's watch it another time.
as much as you can pump up. All right. So this video would show you the difference Down. between posterior osseous nerve and radial nerve. Uh, this patient had a su elbow surgery. She developed postoperative uh, posterior osseous Next. nerve injury. Um, and I'm Bend going now to Down. examine this patient. If you see there was the scar of the previous surgery here on the elbow, I'm asking the patient to do extension of the wrist. Please note that extension of the wrist is the same as dorsiflexion. So she was able to extend the wrist with some radial deviation, as you can see here. Uh, she did that with the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle, which is supplied by the radial nerve. Patient who had the radial nerve has complete uh, wrist drop. They cannot uh, uh, extend or dorsiflex the wrist. Patient with posterior osseous nerve injury, they will be able to uh, extend the wrist. Uh, however, when they do that, they will go into radial deviation as this patient. So let's see that part again. Down. Scar Up. previous surgery Down. is here. Okay, radial okay. deviation as you can see here. Okay. Let's bend them again. Bend them. Extend. Bend. Extend. For the thumb. If you see here, this is an, uh, the other part of the exam. I asked the patient to uh, extend the fingers, and what she did is she extended the uh, PIP and DIP, the proximal interphalangeal and the distal interphalangeal joint. But remember, this extension happens by the lumbrical muscle, which are supplied by the ulnar nerve and the median nerve, but she was not able to extend um, the fingers at the level of the metacarbophalangeal joints. These are the metacarbal, these are the pharyngeal. Here are the metacarbophalangeal joint. She was not able to extend the fingers at this joint. She was only able to extend the, um, the PIP and the DIP. Uh, let's see that part again. You can see extend. she's extending these joints, but bend. these joints are not moving. Bend. She cannot raise the fingers up. from uh, at this level against the gravity. Okay. Let's speak now about median nerve injuries. So the motor part of the median nerve injury that the patient will not be able to flex the thumb index uh, plus or minus the middle finger. Uh, sensory, sensory is a very important part of the median nerve uh, because the median nerve sup uh, supplies sensation uh, for the palmar aspect of the thumb and index and these are very important fingers that we depend uh, on uh, feeling with the bulb of our thumb and index for lots of activities in our life. Um, so this is a very important uh, sensation uh, uh, defect that can happen with median nerve injuries. So median nerve injuries, motor, inability to flex the thumb, index, uh, possibly uh, middle finger. Sensation is very important in median nerve because you lose sensation of the palmar aspect of the thumb and index. I'd like to say here that the median nerve will give on the anterior interosseous nerve, which is uh, a, a motor branch. Uh, so the picture of the uh, anterior interosseous nerve will be the motor part of the median nerve or part of the motor uh, 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 aspect of the median nerve. As we said, anterior interosseous nerve is part of the median nerve. The anterior interosseous nerve controls the muscle, uh, which causes flexion of the IP of the thumb and the DIP of the index. The muscle which controls the, uh, the flexion of the interphalangeal joint of the thumb and the distal interphalangeal, the DIP of the index finger. So, uh, this nerve is the commonest nerve injured in the supra, uh, supracondylar fracture of the humerus in kids. And how do you know that, that when you ask the child to do the OK sign, he will not be able to flex his uh, DIP of the index or uh, the IP of the thumb, and he won't be able to do uh, the circle of the OK sign. Uh, so um, you assess that by asking the child to do an OK, as we're going to see the video in the next slide, and then the child will fail to do that. Um, he will extend actually his DIP as you can see in this picture. Uh, so instead of flexing the uh, DIP and flexing the IP here uh, to uh, do the OK, he will um, push with the two uh, uh, palms, uh, the pulp of the fingers together, and he will get an extension of the DIP rather than flexion. So, so in thing. this video, I'm going to ask the child. Um, to, to do an OK yeah. sign to assist the anterior interosseous. Okay. So this child uh, had the supracondylar so fracture of the humerus, uh, and we are assessing now his anterior interosseous nerve because, as we said, the anterior interosseous nerve is the okay. most commonly injured nerve with supracondylar fracture of the humerus. So do like this. So do like this.
So this is a failure to do the OK sign, patient was not able to flex the thumb, IP of the thumb or the DIP of the index finger. Let's speak now about the last uh, nerve, uh, the ulnar nerve uh, injury. The ulnar nerve supplies mainly the muscles of the hand, which are the intrinsic muscles of the hand, uh, the lumbricals and inter OCI. And um, if there is an injury to the ulnar nerve, there will be paralysis of the intrinsic muscles of the hand uh, that uh, will uh, cause inability of the patient to form uh, abduction and adduction of his fingers uh, by the inter OCI muscle. So if you ask the patient uh, to spread the finger and bring them back together he will not be able to do this uh, another thing is as we uh, showed in the uh, video of the procedure osseous uh, the extension of the interphalangeal joints happened by the lumbricals and the medial two lumbricals are supplied by the ulnar nerve uh, so if there is an ulnar nerve injury the patient will not be able to extend uh, the interphalangeal joints of the small uh, and the ring finger um, sensory there will be loss of sensation from the medial digits so this is a picture uh, of a girl who had supracondylar fracture humerus. She was treated surgically. She developed post-operative uh, ulnar nerve palsy. Uh, if you see her, uh, the medial two digits, their uh, small finger, ring fingers are in a flexed position uh, because extension of the uh, uh, PIP and the DIP happen by the lumbricals mu lumbrical muscles. Uh, uh, these on the medial side are supplied by the ulnar nerve. Patient cannot get them extended. That's called partial claw hand. You, see, you can see here the atrophy of her uh, hypothalamus thinner and thinner uh, eminence uh, because the uh, nerve is not working. Uh, also, the ulnar nerve importantly uh, supplies the adductor of the uh, thumb here. Uh, the adductor of the thumb is the muscle which brings the thumb down to the level of the palm. Uh, so if you ask the patient, if you put a piece of paper and ask the patient to uh, capture this with the thumb, she will not be able uh, to adduct the thumb. So she will use another uh, muscle which is the flexor pulsus longus. This is supplied by the median nerve. Uh, she will use this muscle and bend the IP here to capture that paper rather than uh, using her adductor of the thumb to bring the thumb down. This is called the Froment sign and it's also a characteristic sign of ulnar nerve injury. Thank you very much. Uh, this video and all my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision.